Yo, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Off the Glass podcast. Today, we have got episode number 52 for you all. And we're going to keep it similar like how we did the last episode. No super strict agenda because we are counting down the days. I just checked. We have 14 days until the start of the play-in tournament. I think only 10 days until the end of the, the regular season. Um, which is actually less than that because it's next Sunday, so like nine days um, till the end of the regular season. So the playoffs are right around the corner. These final, final races to to figure out who's going to be in the play-in, who's going to be in the top six. Someone out west is going to have to miss the play-in tournament, whether that's Houston or Golden State. Um, these races are heating up. They're coming down to the finish, so – I want to take you around the association. We have a lot to get into. Um, and I think probably our next episode is when we're going to deep, deep dive into all of our award winners and our all NBA and all rookie teams and all that stuff. So one more episode until we get there. But for now, I'm going to keep it again, loose structure, keep it around the league because this is the best time of year, bro. It's about to be playoff basketball time. And I feel like this playoffs is, is gearing up to be even better than last year's. And I thought last year's playoffs was was off the charts, bro. So I'm excited. How you feeling, Dave? Man, I could not be happier, man. I'm listen, I'm feeling great right now. I'm excited. I'm ready for the playoffs to start, man. I am absolutely ready for the playoffs. I just feel like this playoffs, like you said, is gonna be it, it's it's gonna be great, bro. It's gonna be great. Like we, we talked about before in the West alone. It's gonna be no easy matchups, no easy series. And the easy definitely still has some some interesting matchups. I'm curious to see about. So I'm excited, man. I'm ready to get into it. Definitely. And look, I, I got the notification this morning. Joel Embiid might play on Thursday. That's yeah. another big player. I saw somebody say it was a joke, but if he comes back healthy, they said that the difference for the Sixer seasons might might be that. He got his big time injury earlier in the season so he could actually rest and heal up and be ready for the playoffs versus it happening like in the playoffs and then it derails yeah. everything from there. I mean, that's I, honestly, I didn't really think about it that way because, yeah, I mean, he, he took a chunk of the season, missed a, a bunch of time and, you know, kind of like you said, been able to rest a little bit. Now, I'm assuming, you know, he's going to ramp up right before the playoffs and then come back and be at somewhat full strength. The only problem is right now that the eighth seed and they would have to run into the Celtics, which, which, which would be tough. But I mean, they can ramp up, they can squeeze out a few games because they're not far behind, like even like the Heat, the Pacers, they're not that far behind. Um, they could be in a, in a nice little spot, you know what I mean? So that's that's and it adds another interesting little wrinkle because you can't just fully count out the Sixers now. If Joel Embiid's playing 100 percent because I had been counting them out because I was of the belief that he probably was going to be shut down for the rest of the year for so. Same. For, for this, I think it's the Sixers social team kind of teased it at first, and then Woj brought the full report today saying that he might come back as soon as tomorrow to their lineup to play. And, um, and the thing is, too, like people don't forget how well he was playing before he got hurt, bro. Like he was he running hit, away with MVP, right? If he hit the 65 game minimum, the MVP was his to lose, bro. He was having a better season than he was last year <laughs> when he already won the MVP. Bro, he was out. He was, it wasn't even a debate on who the MVP was at that moment. It was like I said, it's just unfortunate that he got hurt and he couldn't end up, you know, qualifying for the award. But like, bro, he was playing some of his best basketball, looking like he had an, he like, looking like he had an argument to be the best player in the league. Like, that's how well he was playing. Granted, regular season, a lot of people with Joel and Beat are not going to give him that, that praise until he does something in the postseason. But if we're going strictly off of what he was doing in the regular season, he was, he was unstoppable, like flat out. 100%. Um, but what I want to get into, because I know yesterday you went to an iconic LeBron performance, a record-breaking LeBron performance. Yes, sir. Yes, of sir. 40 piece in Brooklyn, broke his career high for three-pointers made, capped it off with a fadeaway out of bounds to break his own career high. Talk to me about that experience in the Barclays, man. Man, that was a, that day was great, man. That was just an all around great day. I I want to say first of all, first ever like real. I mean, I've been to a basketball game before, but I sat in the nosebleeds. 
Uh, so it, to me, like we was watching on the big TV. So it's like you're not really there. You know what I mean? You feel the atmosphere, but it's not really. First time having like good seats, actually getting to watch the game, seeing, you know, the height differences of bro. Guys, these dudes are trees out here. <laughs> but I just want to say, and I've never been like a aura guy ever in my life, bro. But when LeBron walked into the arena, bro, I swear they turned into a Lakers home game. Like they the bro, no one cared about the Nets, no Mikhail Bridges, no Cam Thomas. No. Bro, it was a LeBron show through and through, bro. Like, it was, as soon as he walked out, it was crazy. Every dunk and warm-ups was crazy. Every miss dunk and warm-ups was crazy. But, <laughs> nah, it was, a, it was a great experience, man, honestly. The fact that I think as a Lakers fan, everything I I wanted to happen, happened. I was like, I just need them to win. I would love to see a good Bron or AD game, one of the two. I you know, I kind of, I got both. AD had 25 in, like, I think 25 in, like, 10. Mm-hmm. Um I got to see D'Lo do his D'Lo things, hit some crazy threes. And the degree of difficulty with his shots, like, seeing it in person is ridiculous. Like, I, you, like you don't really see how contested those shots really are, like the hands that he shoots over, but those are some tough shots. And then my my biggest thing, I actually wrote it down here in my notes. Like I said, my biggest thing when I was watching this live, because this is my first time I've ever seeing LeBron play live ever. Bro, the fact that at 39 years old, he is – visibly like he is it jumps off the 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 eyeballs bigger stronger faster smarter than everybody on the court at being the oldest guy in the league is the craziest thing in the world to me like we are you can see it through the tv of course but like watching it live i'm like bro he's just sometimes he's just he looked like he didn't even break a sweat but he's just out thinking these people and it got me thinking like bro i can only imagine what it's like to have seen like 2012 lebron play live like Cause I'm watching old Bron out here cooking, like cooking, going crazy, hitting. Bro, the man hit nine threes, like nine threes, bro. What is LeBron's literally never? We literally watched LeBron do something he's never done before ever, which I did never thought in, in my lifetime I could say I seen that happen. But it was crazy, bro. He just got hot. Uh, everything was you could just tell from the jump everything was falling. Um, he was kind of having his way, and then once he hit the little the fadeaway, all, like out of bounds, and I was like, "Oh, you know, it's over." Like it's- you can tell when LeBron start feeling it, he start his he just start moving different on the yeah, court. bro. The pep and the step was there. You yeah. know what I mean? It got to the point when I say it turned into a Lakers home game, but when I tell you like they were actively cheering for this guy, I'm watching. I'm looking at Nets fans like, "Let's go!" Like like right. go get fifty, bro. It got to a point where after he hit, I think it was the one in like the right wing, um, over I think it was Nick Claxton. The next time he got the ball coming up the court, I'm telling you, it was a standing ovation. Everybody was standing That's crazy. Up. Everyone had their phones out. was like, bro, he about to do something crazy that he just passed the ball. <laughs> but I'm just like, bro, the fact that just came in, took over the whole arena, and then left, is it was crazy to me. But, you know, it was, it was a great experience. Got to see my Lakers win. Um, it looked like a well-oiled machine. Granted, they was playing the Nets, which – is such is bro, that's just a role player team, bro. <laughs> I'm just what like what it looked like watching them play was like they're a team just without a guy. Like that's the biggest thing. It's like mm-hmm. they have solid their players are solid, but they have no like guy to go to yeah, to the point where no, no the, point man. Yeah, that's it. The only thing I mean, you can say like granted, because I believe in like the fourth quarter, they was trying to make a little bit of run, and that was strictly off of just Camp Thomas, like, all right, bro, I'm not passing no more. And just started going crazy, but <laughs> even then, he's he shouldn't be a number one on any team. So right. it, they're just a team with no guy. It was it was plain and simple. But nah, it was it was listen. Can, can I complain? Was a, a a magnificent night. I have no complaints, bro. It was great. It was absolutely. I great. don't. I don't know if you've seen it on the like the broadcast on League Pass after he hit the la- the three to set his career high. There was a dude, you might have seen him in I the seen arena. It. I seen it. In the, yeah. In the <laughs> yeah. I don't know what you call it. It wasn't a mask. It was like a little headset thing. Or right. Not like a headband headset, like, and something. Yeah. yeah. Like he had the whole. He had a goat costume, put it that right. way. Right. had the wool on with the horns and everything. <laughs> and the broadcast, bro, he hits the three and they cut to him in the stands and he's really in the camera like, oh, let's go. Like, bro, and bro the ener- I'm telling you, bro, the energy there was when he was hitting, I think the main one was the 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 fall away one. That one, mm-hmm. that one was like, I right, know he's bugging. It was like he, because Bron is, he's just out here doing stuff now, and everything is falling. Like the threes were nothing but net. Like they were like cash, but he couldn't, he could not miss. So like I said, the energy in the arena was was crazy, and honestly, it opened the gate the doorway for me because now I need to go to more NBA games, and now I need to see. 
I want to see people play live in their prime too. I need to see a lot. Yes. Like all these players play in their prime. So it, it was great, bro. It was a great night. Yeah. Now that I'm working and I have some money I can you know, save up aside to get some tickets. Right. I need I got certain players. LeBron is still on my list. It's like before he retires. I got I gotta I gotta see it once in person. Bro, I got to bro. see KD 100%. in person. Um, and that was somebody I was like, I, I gotta see a Kevin Durant game in person. I got to see him in the playoffs. Like you said, to you really can't comprehend it watching it until you see it in person. It's like, hold up, bro. He's seven foot, like moving yes, like bro. that, bro. Like that. The TV doesn't do it justice until you see it up close and personal. What I will say too, another thing that stood out to me was the fact that, again, like I said, eighty is eighty is mad tall. He's like, I was like, bro, he's mad tall. But I was like, bro, you really can see how skilled he is at that height, bro. Like, and I don't even think he he wasn't even doing nothing like crazy skill, like prime AD type move, like type moves. But like even like certain plays where he didn't even score, but just like the handles at that size, the the quickness at the size. I was like, bro, like these guys, it, it's crazy to be that skilled at being that big. Um, that was another thing I said that stuck out to me for sure. Um, Spencer Dinwiddie is so trash. Like he that stuck out to like a sore thumb, bro. He's so bad. Bro. <laughs> he's so bad. Like, that shit is so funny. Um. But, yeah, I, I think those are probably the main things that stood out to me was the fact that, one, how tall these guys are, how skilled they are. And just the, the – you can – honestly, you can see the difference of, like, IQ levels. Like I said, the Nets are, like, a role-player type of team, and you can just see the difference in IQ. Like, mm-hmm. not even just LeBron. A lot of the Lakers players was just, was just picking them apart. I think the game started out, like, 17 nothing. <laughs> like, it was – It was, like, 31 to 11 after the first – yeah, it, it was over from the jump, bro. It was yeah. never, it was never really a close game until Cam Th- Thomas started to hit some threes, but the game was never in doubt at all. Yeah, Lakers won that game with two points off their bench. That's yeah, bro, the, bro. I'm telling you, the whole starting, I think the whole starting five had it. Let me see. I pull it out right now. The whole starting five went crazy. Rui had they had a, they had 114 <laughs> points combined. This the starting five. Bro, the, it would. That's all it was was starting five. Which I mean, honestly, Gabe Vincent he didn't play terrible. He only played a little bit of minutes, he, like he, first game. He back. got the only two off the bench. <laughs> yeah, but he he wasn't even really shooting that much. I mean, he wouldn't yeah. play terrible. And no, and honestly, nobody else really played. When I think about it, it was him. TP got some love. He was mm-hmm. nah. It looks like Dinwiddie. Didn't bro, Dinwiddie is legit a liability, bro. It's like, why is this guy here? It's just so <laughs> crazy. Cam Reddish didn't get no burn. So yeah, he, those are the only three that really played off the bench. Then with the uh Torian Prince and Gabe Vincent. Um but yeah no it's a, the whole the starters went crazy. I put it that way. Everybody who I wanted to see go crazy went crazy, which is fine with me. But yeah, like I said, I just think that you know it definitely opened the door. I need to see my my thing I want to see Steph play live. Mm-hmm. I need to see. I haven't seen KD. I need to see KD. Um, I need. I want to see Ja play because I feel like that would be very exciting. Yeah. Um, and then you seen Wimby. I need to see Wimby play live, bro. Yeah, Wimby, Chet, Shay, uh, mm-hmm. Joker's another one, bro. And I, the the Jokic game I went to was a like a bad Jokic. I know what you went to. Yeah, like, the one where everybody was like missing. Right, it was like I think the final score for both teams was sub ninety. Is game mm-hmm. two of the the second round of Western Conference uh, playoffs last year, but it's like you can just tell the way that he'll really get it in the post, and he just sits and waits and so patient and just can dissect a defense from the high post with his back turned, bro. Like mm-hmm. it's it, unbelievable to watch. There's so many players that, like, I feel like looking back on it. I wasn't able to see as a kid, like in person. It's like, I'm just not going to get that chance to now unless they play like a celebrity game or something. So mm-hmm. it's like, as an adult, I, I got to see some of these guys. Like, I'm, I'm grateful I got to see Dirk's final NBA game. But mm-hmm. even that is like, like the the nostalgia of it and the moment of it was great. But it was like, that ain't Dirk. This ain't you know what I mean? Dirt. Like, yeah, it ain't I'm real watching dirt. him. He's struggling to move. Bro. Like, <laughs> I'm trying to see Dirk really hit a, uh, uh. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Like that's a, that's what I said, bro. I need to see right now. I want to start early. I need to see a lot of these guys while mm-hmm. they're either entering their primes or in their primes. Like I said, I need to see Steph because Steph is still he's still Steph. I need to see KD, but guys like Jokic, I I would love to see a guy like Giannis play. Because another mm-hmm. thing too, bro, these guys are 
bro, you don't realize how physical these guys are are on this court, yes. bro. Like Bron is trucking people, so I'm like, bro, that's I another can imagine thing. Giannis of, is gonna bug. That's another thing. A lot of people don't realize is like the people that would like watching on TV. Obviously, so many of the narratives NBA is soft now, league is soft now, this that. But it's like when you are watching it in person, like you still can see, yeah, ticky tack foul here or there. But it's like there's a lot of physicality that goes on that, like again, TV just doesn't do it justice until you're seeing it a person. When you're seeing it through like box outs, physicality, those like the screens, the fighting for positioning on the block. Like it's a lot of physicality that goes on that you just is not as visible. From the broadcast, you see, you see it a lot on rebounds, bro. A shot mm-hmm. go up, it's like dudes are scrapping down there, bro. Yep. And, yep. and it's not even like the most physical people. Like it's Nick Claxton, he's mad skinny. It's AD, who he, I mean, he's a big, but he ain't like a real center. But they're going yeah. at it, Rui. Like, bro, they're they're going at it down there. So you definitely yeah. that's one thing you notice is the physicality. But it's great, bro. Like especially if you're someone who likes to like quote unquote analyze the game like because you think about it you're watching the game it's no commentators it's nothing it's just you just watching hoops and it's like it's, it's a different level of like perspective because i can see why the nets stink like it's, it's <laughs> like, i'm watching i'm like no they stink because of xyz like i'm yeah. watching it happen like i see why this late why this play work for the lakers like it's it's just great bro it's, it's a super fun experience one thing I do want to say, it, it comes off of something you said earlier about how you feel like you saw LeBron being not only the oldest player in the league, but also at times in the court, obviously being the, the smartest player, but also still being able to be faster, be stronger, be more explosive than guys who he's literally twice as old as some of the people he's playing against. Mm-hmm. And when I think back across really like any sport outside of, maybe baseball and I'm not too tapped in. So I could be like completely off base, but like once you really start to get up there in age, even I guess with football, right. With a guy like Brady, like as he got older and older into his forties, he never was one that relied on his athleticism. Anyway, he was so dominant because mentally he still was so leaps and miles beyond people and still able to dissect the defense in that way. LeBron's, is still there mentally, like in terms of how much better he is above the competition. But athletically, he hasn't slid. Mm-hmm. Like, obviously, he's not 22 year old Braun with like a 48 inch, I don't know, how crazy ridiculous vertical he had before then. But it's like, bro, still some nights he get up and that head is still pretty close to the rim when he's dunking, bro. So, like, yeah. I don't think we've ever seen the combination of the IQ and the experience just like continue to reach newer and newer heights as he's gotten older now being 39, but combining that with the fact that his body is still in like tip top peak shape. Like we, I can pretty comfortably say barring like ridiculous widespread medical advancements. Like we're not going to see another NBA player at his age moving like this. It's just no, I, it's going to be very hard to happen because you're going to have there's going to have to be some luck involved. You're not going to have to have any type of major injuries with you know which luckily LeBron hasn't had. But additionally, it's like the type of dedication that you have to put into your body to be in that position to be 39 and still be able to put up 40 plus points this late in the season. Like it's just it really is a a feat athletically like forget just the nba like just in terms of all professional sports like is something that we are we may really never see again no for sure it's like i'm watching the game bro he's easily not granted the nets don't have like crazy athletes if you want to put it that way but he was easily the most like athletic person on the court like it wasn't even close um but yeah like you said it's the fact that he's just so much smarter like you can see the so you can see him making the right play almost every single time it's whether that be the right pass knowing when to take it himself um knowing when to pick his spots as well because there's times where there's times where he he ain't really sitting in a chair but there's times where he like locked in on defense for like literally one play and then stopped and then got his little bit of rest there's times where you know he knows when i delo austin Reeves, you do your thing and any times where like all right cool we ain't take a shot in a minute uh, it's gonna be me. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get us a bucket. Like, it's just, it's just so much smarter than everybody on the court. And even the fact that knowing, bro, I got it going. Like he, he, he honestly didn't drive much. I want to say in that game. I mean, he, like you see, he had nine threes. 
so he didn't really need to. But mm-hmm. like, All right, I got to go from the three point line. I'm not just gonna chuck, but like I'm gonna shoot the ball. You know what I mean? So yeah, it, you you could visibly see it. You know, just no. <laughs> I'm to say the only time where he looked a little bit old was sometimes on defense. I'm like, ah, I don't know, Brian. That that part of you slipping a little bit, but. I, I still think though, like need be like you said, you say one possession, like you'll lock in, like he can get, he can do that for you for sure. Hundred percent. He was talking about it on his last pod with uh, with JJ. He was he mm. compared himself. He said, oh, three Cadillac got yeah. seventy thousand minutes long now <laughs> in the NBA." He was like, "These the same tires, <laughs> like yeah, they worn down, bro. They were worn down." I don't even blame him, man. Play more minutes than yeah. everybody. Yeah, hundred percent. It's just it's it's crazy to see night and night out that he's still doing this, and we about to go into another postseason with LeBron doing stuff like this again with a chance to. And you really you can never count them out. Like they're gonna be a playing team, but it's like bro, they get in. You you have to fear them. You have to fear them and respect them, bro. There's honestly, bro, the only team. The only team that I truly feel like the Lakers like cannot beat is the Nuggets and like low key the Kings, but we're not gonna say that. But <laughs> 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 but is the Nuggets, bro? Everyone else, even if you think that we'll lose, there's no there's no like chance that I'm gonna be like we literally can't beat them. The Nuggets are the only team I'm like, bro. They might just have our number. It might just be slow because yeah. they have another guy who that mental, super smart, um, mm-hmm. in his prime type of player like. He's not the best player on that court. Or Braun, I'm saying, is not the best player on that court. Like, Jokic is right here mentally, but he's still at that stage where he can take over games and is the best player on the court every night. So that's why that's the only time I'm like, bro, we, we can't beat them. But everybody else in the West, listen, we at, bare, uh, at minimum is going to give them a good fight. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good segue because I was going to say that I locked into about two or three other games uh, yesterday on Sunday. Um, and the first one, I think it was the first game on that day, was Cavs-Nuggets. And it was like a five, six-point game at halftime. Um, and then the Nuggets came out in the third quarter. And I think at one point in the game, they were like 16 of 19 from three or something ridiculous like that. Like they were lighting the Cavs up. I think Jokic had a first-half triple-double. He ended the game with – 26, 18 rebounds, and 16 assists, and he was a plus 37 Jeez. in 35 minutes, bro. The way that he was like he was knocking down, he like, he knocked down a three kind of when they were getting it rolling. But like Reggie Jackson had he went five for five from three. KCP went six for nine from three. Michael Porter Jr. added three more threes. Aaron Gordon knocked in a three when they were like really rolling there in the third quarter. Um, so they are, I mean, as much of a well-oiled machine as they were last year. And again, this is a game against a very good Cavaliers team who's healthy where the Nuggets are missing Jamal Murray. Um, so the Nuggets, I almost want to say they're more dangerous than they were last year, just off the strength that they're even more comfortable in their systems. It's just another year. Um, and they're getting, again, those contributions like we brought up before off their bench from guys like a Payne Watson or Justin Holiday um, and, and Christian Brown. Like they just they really just retooled and reloaded and are, are in the, they're putting themselves in the driver's seat to, um, you know, potentially finish out in a tight race with OKC. But they might net out as the one seed in the West is even if they don't net out the one seed by the West, as I view, it, goes through Denver. Because I, I don't see a world where they don't really get challenged until the Western Conference Finals. Like, I'm not saying that everything's going to be a cakewalk, but they just feel too experienced and too well put together to, for them to, to, to slip up barring, like, a, a an injury or something. Nobody's beating the Nuggets, bro. If I'm just going to be completely unbiased, because if you look at the – bro, the top teams in the West – besides the Nuggets, are like the Thunder and the Timberwolves, normally you'd say that your biggest challenge will be the other teams at the top of the, the conference with you. Bro, those teams are so young that in a series, that I'm like, bro, give me the team that literally just won the championship and has the best player on the court. Like, give me them. Like, the Clippers, I don't trust the Clippers. It's, uh, you could call it bias. I don't know. You call it whatever you want. I don't trust the Clippers. The Mavs, granted, like, they still – like, they're a good team for sure, and they're playing a lot better. 
for definitely. Um, but even then, it's like I still so lean the Nuggets. I say that is a good competition. Then you have the teams at the bottom where obviously you can't really count them out. But it's like they're still kind of at the bottom for a reason. Like I said, the Lakers, the Nuggets have their number. The Warriors are just flat out. They just stink. The Suns just stink. Like they, they were like you said, it runs to Denver, bro. There's no. I, I would be very, very, like I said, barring like injury or anything like that, I would be very, very surprised if a team just flat out beats them in a series before the yeah. before the finals. Yeah, I, I would too. Um, last thing I want to say on this one, though, bro, I'm still – what's going on with Darius Garland, man? I don't I, – the injury, I just feel like he – since he's mm-hmm. come back from the jaw issue, he's just not been himself. I think he's averaging 14-ish points over the last 10 games. He's shooting like sub 30% from three over the last like 10 or so games. Like he just does not, does not look himself. I think he was like two for eight in this one. Again, it, it, it got away from them very, very quickly in the third quarter. Um, but again, five points on two for eight shooting. That's just tough. That's tough. Um, he's just, he probably never just got a chance to get his groove. You know what I'm saying? Going, have being injury riddled. Like it's tough to get that momentum going you want to say because look at when a guy when a guy's like like a Jalen Green right now and a guy's hot that just carries over to game after game after game when you kind of are dealing with injuries and you never really got a chance to get it going I feel like it's unless you're like like those top top guys it's kind of tough to to get that ball rolling a little bit you better figure it out bro because coming out of last year when you know y'all are young this is your first real playoff test Okay, y'all, Jerry Allen literally came out and said the lights were too bright. The lights can't they, the lights can't be too bright again. You can't use that <laughs> excuse back-to-back years. Y'all done had a whole 365 to get adjusted to the brightness. No, and you're just not gotta, built after that. <laughs> right. He, he's got to get that into shape. Um, Segway's working crazy today. Speaking of the team that, that beat them in last year's playoffs, um, the Knicks had a, a night game against the Thunder which was, to me, one of the best games I've seen all year. Um, like, really been able to catch live and lock in on. Um, this game was back and forth all the way throughout the second half. SGA really struggled from the field in this one, but typical SGA fashion came through and ended up hitting what was the game winner on a tough fall away from the baseline. Um, but J-Dub, Jalen mm-hmm. Williams – Put this team on his back. When I'm telling you down the stretch, it was just tough shot, tough layup. He had a crazy dunk uh, over Deuce McBride. He ended up with 33 on the night, backpacked them. Giddy had a triple-double in this one as well. Um, and then on the Knicks side of things, Brunson is just – He's unbelievable, bro. bro he's a dog. And he didn't. He didn't have the greatest shooting game in this one. Really, nobody on either team did. Really, outside of Jalen Williams, there was especially down the stretch. Guys were gassed. There's a lot of just back and forth sprinting because dudes are missing out open looks. But um, Brunson, I, I was going through and starting to really try to solidify out my All NBA teams, and I've got four guys. Obviously, I think are locked to make All NBA for first team. And I'm sitting here trying to, like, look at the rest of the pool of players for that fifth slot. And I really think Jalen Brunson has got a legitimate case to potentially be an all-NBA first-team player. Yeah. I mean, you know, I'm not, not going to get any argument from me. You know, he's been playing great. And the fact that it's kind of been the Jalen Brunson show adds more to his case because obviously with right. Randall out, like the, uh, everything runs through Brunson and he's been delivering. Like, granted, they haven't, they didn't win this last game. They had another close game that they ended up losing. They scored 60, but it's like you can't, they brought a guy at 61. You know what I mean? You right. wouldn't be nowhere in, near in that game without him. So, you know, he's, he's been playing insane and he's, I think for sure he has a case. Um, I would have to take a look at everyone, but. Yeah, he he definitely has a case for sure. Um, and games like this just prove it where he's, bro, he's like willing this team to like to to pull through because they've been so injury riddled all season. Um, yeah. So every like so much has been on his shoulders, and he's been stepping up. So hopefully they can. I just want the Knicks team to get healthy and get whole again, so you can he can re, you can get you can relieve some of the pressure that you put on this guy because right now he's just he's carrying this team. 
Yeah, I know we mentioned it probably the last couple episodes, but again, he's still the most blitz player in the league because why not <laughs> yeah. force anybody else to beat you? Mm-hmm. Um, it, it makes a ton of sense schematically. Um, unfortunately, Josh Hart in the post game after this one said he obviously isn't in tune with what's happening medically with OG or Julius Randle, but he said he's been playing with the expectation that the guys that they've been playing with recently, like this is who they're going to roll with in the playoffs. And some of that is yeah. coming from a, is, some of it is coming from a state of him just being like, I'm not going to sit here and wait for right. them to come back. We have to win these games now. Like every game still matters. Um, but, you know, it could be some writing on the wall of just like, you know, maybe things are worse with OG's, you know, elbow than has been let on. Obviously Julius has a shoulder issue. That's always kind of a finicky thing. So it's like, if this is what they're rolling out with, it's going to be tough because it's going to be hard to win a playoff series, let alone multiple playoff series, with just one guy. Mm-hmm. Like, two can like you're going to really be looking for him to do so much offensively for you. Um, that it, it would suck if that that's how it works out. Even if they just get OG back, like that would be huge for them for both sides of the ball. Um, so I'm hopeful that they can at least get one of them back, at least with a couple games left here to try to like get some rhythm going into the playoffs. But um, nonetheless, bro, Brunson is ridiculous. Jalen Williams is going to be an all star next season. You can stamp it now. I said it here it's April 1st, 2024. He's going to be an all star next year. He's, if he was not playing with SGA, There'd be so much more buzz around him, bro. Yeah, no, you're uh old or is this new OKC team kind of like the old one take is I'm I'm I, I never fully turned it down, but I was more so like, eh, that'd be tough to see. But uh, the more and more I watch these guys play, the more and more I watch Jalen Williams play. That's the main guy. I'm just like, I don't know, bro. I, I see what you mean, bro. Cause what the dude's ridiculous. Like he's right. like you said, for the most part, I didn't get a chance to watch this game live. I did watch like a uh, a recap afterwards. Um, but just m- down the stretch, it was just like, like I said, SJ didn't really have it going much, but Jalen Williams stepped up and it's just hitting shot after shot after shot. Yeah. And bro, it's insane, bro. He's insane, bro. Jalen Williams is nice. I'll give it to you. Yeah. He's definitely nice. I'm curious. I am curious to see what his like ceiling f- really, really is. Mm-hmm. Um, granted, will you ever hit that top, top ceiling playing alongside Shay? I probably it's possible because I mean James Harden ain't hit it with with Kevin Durant either. That's true, but they also didn't have like don't get me wrong, Chet is there and Chet is a guy in himself. But I feel like their games are so much different. Yeah, that, like he'll he can still hit that ceiling playing alongside both of those guys. I think they can all hit that ceiling playing hopefully all together. They don't have to split up and actually no, yeah, hundred percent to do that. But like I said, it's just gonna be interesting to see, and it's gonna be listen if you're a, a Thunder fan, it's it's gonna be great. Yeah, he uh, there's been narratives I've seen fans on Twitter try to say that he's SGA made or that he's just you know, nah. catch and shoot spot up guy, but it's like if really lock in, watch the some of his films, some of his games, his self creation is very, very effective. He's extremely efficient as a spot up catch and shoot guy, and if you look at his numbers without SGA this year, it's like his points per game jumps up to like the mid to high 20s. The efficiency is still extremely high in those games. It's like he's he's able to create for himself when the opportunities is there. And even in games like this, like we said, SJ doesn't have it going. It's not like he's just sitting here spotting up, knocking down shots. He's creating a lot off the dribble for himself, driving, getting downhill. Like I say he had one where it probably honestly should have been an offensive foul, but they didn't call it. Just yeah, boom, sure. muscle muscle deuce mcbride and and slammed it down like he he's he's doing a lot of self-creation that i think just gets swept under the rug because sga has blossomed into the first team all nba mvp caliber player that he rightfully deservedly so is um but yeah he's the leap that he's taken from year one to year two makes me feel like bro this year three version of j-dub is going to be all star easily, easily, especially if this team is is continuing to win like they have this year. Yeah, for sure. I I can see it. Like you said, the progression. 
you can see you can see the trajectory put it that way you know what i mean he's he's progressing every time every time he gets on the court he's progressing and it's i mean like i said it's scary cuz i i genuinely feel like different than the old OKC team they wouldn't have to split up in order to hit those ceiling mm-hmm. um, obviously maybe not like mvp cuz you know he's not going to be an mvp playing with Shea, but still it's just as far as his talent level um i think he can reach at least somewhat close to the ceiling all three of them playing together so the future is definitely bright. The only thing is, like, listen, they want to win now. So I don't blame them. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's more, it's less like a, yeah, this, yeah, down the road, the future is great. Like, nah, they're, we're here. <laughs> we're already yeah, here. All right. So let's see what they can, let's see if they can actually, you know, shock people and actually make some noise in this playoff, even though yeah. they are, you know, would be a very, very young team to do so. They are here now and they're in a position where, they have so much flexibility still between all of the assets that Sam Presti has hoarded, <laughs> all the first round picks mm-hmm. that he's accumulated over the years that they have the options to go out and make a splash trade still if the opportunity presents itself. Or even in a draft class like this one, there's multiple big guys, guys like uh, Donovan was last name, Klingon from UConn, um, who – seem like would be a perfect guy to pair with somebody like Chet. He's already like right now in college, bigger built than Chet can probably bang a little bit better coming into to the league. Um, and then that frees up Chet to not necessarily have to rush to get bigger, add muscle, can necessarily stay more lean. You can lean a little bit more than on his shot making and some of the versatility with his handles there. Like there's just the the options are really endless for this this team right now. It's very rare that you are in this kind of position to be this young, to be ready to win now. Obviously, still in contention for the one seed in an absolutely loaded Western Conference, and be like, yeah, I'm still sitting on like 16 draft picks over the next like five years. That's crazy. It's it's ridiculous. So in a good position. It, it couldn't ask to be in a better position. Um, Speaking of the standings, just a real quick snapshot again here with about a week left in the regular season. Um, out East, Celtics have clinched the one seed. Um, they they lost the game to the Hawks where DeJounte Murray put up 44 on 44 shots. And after the game, Joe Mazzulla was asked why he was so willing to switch Chris Stapps on to DeJounte late in the game. And he was like, look, to be real with you, this isn't verbatim, so don't don't take it word for word. <laughs> the, the gist of how I felt like he came off was, look, we already clinched the one seed. At some point, Chris Stapps is going to have to switch on to a point guard. We need him to get some reps. And, like, you can't even you can't, you can't even knock be that. Mad, you can't be mad at it because, like, they lose. Who really – who cares? You know what I mean? They, they took care of business earlier on, so they get to do this type of stuff now. They get the yeah, no, nah, facts. I honestly, I'm I'm with that philosophy because it's like, if not now, when? If we can't experiment now and figure right. out what works, what does it? Can we do this? Can we? Can we not do this? Like, you're lit- This is literally the best time to do it. So I'm with right. that philosophy. I'm 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 behind you, Joe. Hundred percent. Because look, right now as it sits, first round, you potentially could have to go up against the 76ers with them be back. That'd be crazy. Time. <laughs> why but Chris Stapps might have to get on that island right quick with Maxi. you need to get him some reps now and because obviously moving forward you, you're going to have to see guys like Brunson or Donovan Mitchell or Garland or Halliburton like get those reps in now when the stakes don't matter as much if you lose actually they don't matter at all because you could lose every single game you're still going to be the one seed out east That's right. uh, only thing you're fighting for is to have home court advantage in the finals if you're able to get there really at this point um, yeah. and even still, they've got a six game gap on the yeah. one seat out west. So it's <laughs> like they're, say, you're probably, still good. they're probably good there anyway. Um, so yeah, they they've all but wrapped up their seating. Um, the Knicks, Cavs, and Bucks are slightly you really could throw the, the magic in there as well, a little jumbled up two through five. Um, the Bucks are 11 games back from the Celtics. Um, the Cavs are two and a half games back from them. Knicks in fourth, Magic in fifth, and then the Pacers are a game and or sorry, a half a game ahead of the Heat to be the sixth seed and not in the plan. And then the Sixers 
are two and a half or two games behind the Pacers in the plan. So potentially still some shake up there. Nothing is set in stone. And then obviously you've got the Bulls and the Hawks who have no business being in the plan tournament, but will be in the plan tournament. And I almost want one of them to like shock a team like the Heat. Um, I think I was listening to, I can't remember who, it was another podcast, and they were talking about how uh, they had some Heat fans say, Obviously, they don't wish for their team to lose, but they they want them to get like embarrassed this year in the playoffs so that they start taking the regular season seriously. Because like y'all are putting yourself in a position, and obviously Jimmy is the face of it, being like, what do you say? Like two months ago, it's like, yeah, now it's time to turn it on. It's like, okay, bro, you've already thrown away fifty games. I hate Jimmy sometimes, bro. <laughs> but but no. I do. Like you're in a position where you have to, you have to at least win one of two if they end up in the plan. Like I said, they're still a half game behind the Pacers to potentially not be in the plan. So maybe they can jump into the six seed. But if they don't, you have to win one of two, one of which being probably against the Pacers or the Sixers. That's not a gimme. And then you're going to have to play the Bulls or the Hawks. And one game, it's Trey Young or DeMar DeRozan. Like, why even put yourself at risk, bro? Because if we recall, y'all was mighty close to losing in the play-in last year, bro. That's facts. Against who? The Chicago Bulls. So, like, why are you playing with your food like this? Bro, I don't, like, it's so annoying, bro, because, like, uh, it's like, all right, yeah, trying to be cool. Like, yeah, we don't need, we don't care. It don't matter what seed we are. We can be the 10 seed. We're going to win the play-ins and then play the one seed and beat them. Why? Why do you want to do this right. the hard way, bro? Just play in the regular season. You don't even, you don't even got to go crazy hard. If you don't care about all-stars, you don't care about none of that extra stuff, that's perfectly fine. But, like, you don't need to be a seven seed, bro. When you, right. if, if you are really better than that, it's like, why be a lower right. seed when you don't have to be? So that's why the the Jimmy stuff honestly just pisses me off sometimes. Because honestly, Jimmy to me just wants a a nice quote. Like Jimmy, Jimmy talks like he's making a documentary, and he wants like people to look back at it and be like, "Yeah, that quote was hard. That really played out." Like now it's time to turn it on. Shut up, bro. Like like when he was in um when he was playing in the Boston series, and he was like, "We gonna win the next one. We gonna win the next one." We go win the next one, like bro. What, bro? It's, it's you. The first one was like, I. Right, you can't keep saying that, and then eventually, when it's like, I told you we was gonna win the next one. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy be pissing me off, bro. I swear. Uh, but I, I, that that podcast, whoever that he fan is, I completely understand what he feels because one of these. I mean, honestly though, they that, that happened though, like a couple years ago, and it didn't change nothing. Didn't they lose in the first round? Was that the bubble year where they? Yeah, lost? they lost. They lost to Milwaukee, right? Yeah, and they, didn't they get embarrassed? Like, didn't it was like a it was a bad loss, and they yeah. still was just like, nah, we we gonna do it, we gonna run this back again. So I mean, I don't know, they might get embarrassed and still do the same thing. Who knows? Yeah, I just I I and you know it's crazy because I made the video earlier in the year about how dangerous I felt like the Heat were. We were like 30, 40 games into the season. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought they were gonna be one of the teams that could have broken out out of that you know, mid range and push themselves to a four or a three seed. And they've gone in the complete opposite direction. Again, like I mentioned in the video, injuries have not helped them. Tyler Hero has missed missed a ton, a ton of time this season. Um, you know, Jimmy and Bam collectively have have missed time sporadically here or there. But like again, he just does not take the regular season seriously. And it starts with Jimmy. And so the whole team mentality again has just been like we're, we're going to get to the playoffs. We're going to get to the plans. It's like we're just going to snap it into gear. And it's like somebody needs to just smack them around one time and be like, no, you're not making the playoffs because you want to be stupid and play around with it. I will say just to, if I'm just thinking, because I'm trying to play devil's advocate at least a little bit. Like in their mind, they could be thinking, yo, a couple years ago, we was the one seed and we lost. And we was the eighth seed, and we lost. Like, and I'm just saying, in their mind, they really might be like, bro. At this point, I don't care. Like, we we just need to I'm get sure in I'm sure they don't, but just <laughs> logically, it makes no sense to want to be in the playing versus. I feel you. Yeah. Secure the spot in the playoffs. Like, I feel you. 
not I'm not saying that they out here are going around like intentionally losing games, but the the level of intensity that they approach the regular season with, especially early, early on, is far too low because like we just flip side mentioned the Celtics, they've been taking care of business for so long. They can just coast the last like it's April 1st right now. I said the plan starts uh, 14 days from now. That means their playoff series is not going to start until like April 20th. April 21st or 22nd, they could really coast the next three weeks, chill, get healthy if guys are got nagging injuries, whatever, like get them ready for the, the long stretch that's going to be the NBA playoffs. But because y'all wanted to, I'm now I'm talking about the Heat, because they wanted to lollygag the beginning of the season and they're just thinking about getting to the playoffs, getting to the playoffs, now y'all are in a position where these games really matter. Like these games matter a lot. Especially like even the difference between the seven and eight seed, because whoever the seven seed is gets the home game for that first playing matchup. It's like that's not set in stone for you right now. So it's like there's a lot still up in the air for them, including just the playoffs itself. So yeah, I uh I hope somebody humbles them, bro, because they, they gotta stop doing it. Hey, we'll see. Gotta stop doing it. Um but that is that is out east. Technically, the Nets are still mathematically available to make the plan, but Tuh, not happening. after what I've seen. <laughs> they ain't making nothing. Uh, and deservedly so. That team needs to needs to do something, bro. Did you see the report that they turned down an offer for Jalen Green and multiple firsts for Mikel? They're bugging. They're kicking themselves now. Because I, oh, I guarantee you, if they offer that trade today, they're taking it in a heartbeat. 100%. Could you they imagine? Might just take, they might just take the swap and give them picks. <laughs> right. <laughs> Could you imagine uh, this version of Jalen Green with Cam Thomas? Bucket side it's by like just everywhere. <laughs> Buckets <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> we, we haven't even talked about Jalen Green on the pod, I don't think. Let, let, we let's, haven't, let's, we the, we the Rockets guys. We, we, right. we were on the Rockets train when everybody was hating on the Rockets. That, that's on us. We we about to dedicate we the we next couple of minutes right now just to what Jalen Green has been doing since he has had publicly announced that he has a kid on the way, bro. Hey, man, that do something to you. Bro, in his, in his last 10 games, he's putting up 30 points, seven and a half rebounds, four points assists on 49% from the field and a 44.4% from three. And over 50% of his shots come off of basically anywhere, but like three or more dribbles, like a quarter of them are like anywhere between three to six. Another quarter is like seven or more dribbles. He is working like crazy. The last like three weeks or so, he probably has at least six no look threes. <laughs> For real, um, his step back has become one of the most lethal, disgusting step backs across the entire NBA. He's up there with Trey Mann for me right now in terms of how much separation he creates off some of these step backs right now. Um, his game against the Thunder a couple of nights ago. I didn't get to catch it live. I, I literally was watching it the next morning, and I paused it two different times because I was like, hold up, bro. Rewind. Got to see that again. That's This is who? Jalen Green? Wipe the glasses. I'm like, nah, bro. This is not the same player, bro. He's moving entirely different. And I don't want to hear, because I've, I, I see it starting. <sighs> Without Shangun, he gets to play more free. He gets to play yeah, faster. Yeah. Stop that. Stop that, bro. Stop that. Because that's a dangerous narrative to start spinning up. And I've seen some Rockets fans attach themselves to it. Don't do that, bro. Those two guys, 1,000% can coexist. Look at what's happened. Look at what's happened. Jokic and Jamal Murray. Mm -hmm. Sabonis and De'Aaron Fox. That can coexist. They just need to learn to play together. They're young. Let it Work, let it take time. The best thing is that he's getting this opportunity now to get hot, to get in a rhythm, whether they're able to make the plan or not. Like, 
great. But that let that momentum carry into the offseason and next season where he can really work with Shingun and like get it down pat. They're going to be able to introduce a lot more actions with Shingun working out of the post. Their two man game can get stronger. I've been the biggest guy who's just said Jalen Green still can be a very, very good NBA player. It always has just been the shot diet, his shot selection that needed to be tweaked. And his efficiency, and it's like he's been super efficient on this stretch that he's been on. And it's like all we need to do is blend that in with shots that he takes with Shangun, which is not hard. It's not like y'all making it seem like he's bringing in another guy that's like going to take up his space. Like it, mm -mm. those two guys can pair together really, really well with the rest of this entire Rockets roster. Like it, to me, schematically, it feels like such a good fit. It just is going to take time for really young players to learn how to play that way. It's not like, dudes, I remember, bro, Jalen Green is still like 21. Like, it, give these guys time, bro. So don't don't start that narrative. But but what have you been seeing from Jalen Green, bro? Because he has been moving like an entirely different NBA player the last two to three weeks. The biggest thing I've seen from Jalen Green, I want to say, is the decision making. That's the biggest yes. thing. I think there's that, no hesitancy anymore. Yeah, exactly. I think that the it's weird because it's like it's not like I wanted to say the confidence is there, but the confidence has been there because he's been taking crazy shots. So it's like it's right. been it's been smarter. He's just been playing a lot smarter. He's been making the right decision, whether that be passing the ball, whether that mean whether that being knowing when the right decision is me actually going to get a bucket and making sure that bucket is a quality shot that I can actually hit. Like you said, his step back has been like the most money thing in the planet for the last couple few games. So that's been knocked down. But like I said, it's it's really, to me, the biggest thing is the decision-making and uh, the confidence being there, knowing when to score, knowing when to make the right play. Um, I, he's not playing more free because Shingun's not there. They are playing like a – I'd say they're, play, they're kind of playing like a different style of basketball, which is right. obviously – which makes sense not having – uh. I said I think I said Sabonis. I meant Shingun being there, not having him being there, but I think it just adds another way they can play rather than like yes. this should be the only way they should play basketball. Um and not have Shingun there. So it just adds another way they can play. Um the defense has been good just as far as the Rockets as a whole. Um, but I think we can kind of predict that with an Eman Doka led team. So yeah, like I said, the biggest thing for me was the decision making. Like he looks like when you watched him before, it was like, bro, are you, it was plenty of time to you're just like, what is that? That's just a dumb shot. Right? That's just a dumb decision. Now it's just like way more controlled, um, mm -hmm. way more smart. And then, you know, that comes along with, you know, you see a couple shots go in. Now your confidence is through the roof, i.e. the six turnaround threes he's knocking down. Because <laughs> he's always had the talent, but it's just like putting everything together. And now it just seems like he's starting to at least put things a little bit more together. Um, and you just, if he continues like this, the sky is the limit. Because like we said before, the talent has always been there. It's just been the other stuff that needed to come along with it. But like you said, he's only, I believe he's 22 years old. Like, it's, bro, stuff takes time, bro. Right. Stuff, stuff really takes time. Like, when he came into the, like, people don't realize, like, guys can come into the league at, like, 19, 20. Kids, literal like, kids, bro. Bro, like, I right, put it, like, a 19-year-old a could come into the league, play a decade in the NBA, and still be under 30. Like wild, like, you gotta That's realize Devin Booker. <laughs> yeah, bro. Like you gotta realize, like guys, they're kids, bro. They need time to understand how to play the right way. They need time to fully develop their own skill set and mentally. We just talked about earlier about LeBron, how like at this point he's just so much smarter than everyone on the court because he's played for a hundred years. Of course, he's gonna be smarter than everyone. Like guys need to actually develop the mental side of the game and know how to play basketball. And when they put it all together. It looks great, but you got to give that player time to get to that point, bro. You can't just rush that process. Some people right. hop straight into the league and they're already there. Most people, they need time. It's it's a process. You know what I mean? Like a guy like Shea, people look, Shea's been in the league for a few years now. It's not like he's this 21 year old that just got into the league and now he's just doing this. Like it took time for him to get to the 30 point per game, all NBA caliber guy. And most people, it takes that time. Um, yeah, I just hope that Jalen Green can continue on his path and like keep, you know, putting everything together. Yeah, if if the Rockets were to get rid of him or Shangun, I think that they would greatly, greatly regret it. It would be it's so. It would be for no reason. Like if they do it now, it'd be literally for no reason. Because you, 
you didn't even, one, you didn't even give, it, give it time to see if it could even work. Even if you say beginning of next year, whenever Shangun comes back, at the beginning it start it's a little bit slow. Just give it time. I just please just give it time. Don't rush it and be like, oh, these guys can't play together. Because that would, I agree with you. I think that'd be a huge mistake. Right, because it we've just seen it work too much. And a what Jalen Green is doing right now is like that's starting to hit the type of projections that people were placing on him when he got drafted. So it's like this is the first time we're really like seeing it for a a stretch of time consecutively where it's like, whoa, elite shot making, elite athleticism, elite finishing, the handles, like everything is really starting to fall in line for what was projected of him. Um, And at the same time, you've got a guy in Shangun who it's like, he's drawing Jokic comparisons, who's the best player in the world. Like, you, why why get rid of either of those? Like, right. pair that together, bro. So give it time, Rockets fans. Like, what you're – witnessing right now out of Jalen Green. Yes, it's a heater. I don't know. I, I hope it's sustainable. I think at worst, it just raises his floor to a place where he's just in a better position than he was for the you know majority of the first half or 70% of this season. Um, and like I said, let those two get together, continue to work that chemistry, find different actions that work for the two of them because you're only introducing more guys who are athletic and can, well, not all can space the floor, a guy like a man Thompson who's super athletic and has been playing really well down the stretch for them here as well. Uh, but even a guy like Cam Whitmore who can come off the bench, can space the floor, also brings that athleticism to play around the hub in Shangun. Like he can get everybody going. It's like, I want to see that version of the Rockets in a couple of years. So, so keep, keep the pace here. Don't do not break this up prematurely because, because there's no reason to. Side note, super, super side note. When I was watching the Lakers game, I swear to you, like, one of my thoughts was like, bro, I wish we we drafted Cam Whitmore. Because I was like, I was like, bro, I, we just need another guy off the bench that could come in, get some buckets, give a spark, something. I'm just like, dang, imagine if we took Cam Whitmore. Like, he forget Spencer, Spencer didn't with you. That could be Cam Whitmore minutes. Yeah, it, yeah. Uh, bro, I swear to God, I was watching the game thinking that when I think Dinwiddie like dribbled the ball for his foot or some dumb shit he'd be <laughs> doing. I don't know what he did. He did something <laughs> stupid. And that was my first thought. I was like, bro, I wish we got to get Whitmore. Yeah, no, he would He would be nice in LA. He would be nice. Um, to get back, though, to the, the playing race out West, realistically, there are four spots for four playing spots, and there's one, two, there's this seven teams um, who I think realistically still have a chance to either be in the play-in or in the playoffs, um, or obviously, well, one of them has to get eliminated. Um, so the Mavericks and the Pelicans both are 45 and 29. There are two games above the seven and eight seed in the play-in, which are the Kings and the Suns. The nine seed is currently the Lakers, who are a game and a half back of the eight and seven seed. Then you have what I think is the most intriguing matchup in all East or West in the current playoff race, which is the fact that the Rockets went on an 11 game win streak, which was slapped, snapped last night by Luca and the Mavericks, who, if you haven't seen him hit a 25 foot finger roll, please just Google Luca layup. Math rockets, whatever. <laughs> he's he's an NBA player, bro. Or NBA player. He's an NBA a, player. <laughs> he's, a, he's a video game player. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That jump was crazy. Um, but uh so they, they snapped the Rockets heater, but because of that, they are now sitting at just two games behind the Warriors for the 10 spot. Now, obviously, again, the Rockets or the Warriors, one of those teams is going to have to miss the playoffs, and they play each other on Thursday. First of all, that game needs to get flexed, national primetime TV. 100%. Don't have that be on no league pass. It needs to be TNT, ESPN. 100%. Um, but that is going to be a big, big game. could potentially be the game that sways that matchup one way or the other. Um, that'd be that's gonna be a huge game. Like, like I said, it's not gonna be you win, you're in. But like, like I said, it, it it'll be a big for whoever wins that. Definitely, and I uh, I want to I want to pivot to the Warriors here because we just spent a good amount of time talking about the Rockets. Um, and I want to ask you this: 
what will it mean for this organization if they end up slipping to the 11 seed and missing the plan term? Uh, big changes need to happen, and they need to happen now. So if they miss the playoffs, <clears throat> you're going to have to make some tough decisions, whether that be trading clay, like – you're going to have to revamp the roster because the thing is you want to maximize the time that you have with Steph Curry being at this level. Cause he's still, even if it's the tail end, even if it's closer to the end of his prime, he's still, I'd still say he's in his prime. I still say he could be a number one on a championship level team, but the, you need to build a roster that can win around him. You need to build a roster that's going to be able to compete at least because right now, Holding on to the Clay Draymond, granted he they put Clay to the bench, but holding on to this iteration of the Warriors, it's over. Like that dynasty part of it, that, that's it's wraps, bro. If you wanna, it's, it's gonna be tough because you don't just flip a switch and then make, build another contender that's different from the one you had before. But you need to do something if you want to maximize your time with Steph and potentially have him compete for another ring. Because I, but I will say I don't think Steph is the guy to where like. Oh, we're not good. I want to leave. I want to trade. Like I think he's like a warrior for life type of guy. Hundred percent. But it's like, even if, even if he says I want to be with the Warriors my whole career, you still don't want to waste it. You still don't want to be like, all right, we got Steph. We'll just go through the motions, be a playing team every year. Like, no, nah, you don't want to do that. You want to at least build right. a team around him that's that's capable of competing. And I just think that comes with hard with tough decisions. Um, Trading players who you know has been good good for the organization like a Clay, right. um, yeah, it's, it's it's gonna be tough. Like a, even a guy like Draymond is tough because his, he still has a lot of impact on the game. It's really just the I, I about, it's not even off the court. It's on the court, like <laughs> and <laughs> on the bro. court. And yeah, that's the biggest yeah. problem because right now it's like, is it worth? It, is it worth it? You know what I mean? Like the, all the on, on the court antics. Is it? riling the team up and helping them get wins or is it really no just it's getting hurting ejecting? you yeah and getting and hurting you so like i said i think if they miss the playoffs it's really just gonna be time for this some tough decisions to be made i we said this last off season that there was tough decisions to be made we said when bob myers left that he left because he didn't want to be the one to make those tough decisions. The writing has been on the wall here for y'all coming out of last year with the, what, what all happened really ever since Draymond Green like punched Jordan Poole. Like, tough decisions have had to have been made since then, and y'all have continued to put it off and put it off and put it off. You get rid of Jordan Poole. You don't really – like, Draymond just gets a slap on the wrist, like, so much could be like we could spend a whole podcast episode deep diving into what has transpired in Golden State over the last two NBA seasons. But for y'all to be in the position that you're at now with Steph playing the way that he is with this currently constructed roster, like you said, to now be in a spot where, like we say, if, if, if they miss the plan, well, there's tough decisions that have to be made. That's on y'all. Y'all let it get to this 100 percent on y'all. Anybody you ask, anybody who's really paying attention, we've seen this. What what has been going on with Draymond Green? The antics, like we knew forever, this is Draymond. But like, I feel like it's ramped up to a place where it's like, bro, what is going on with you, bro? Like, obviously, the whole thing with with Jordan Poole going public, like that's outside of your control. Like that type of stuff has probably, obviously, not necessarily to that extent, but like. Teams fight, teams have those kinds of scuffles, like that happens. But for it to get public, like, yeah, it's not in your control, but at the end of the day, it happened. Like the video is out there, everybody's seen it. The damage that it did to Jordan Poole, I think we're still seeing. Like he's he's just not the same player, bro. Um, and so for y'all to be in the position that you're in now, where Draymond Green in their last game against the Magic was a couple nights ago, had, I think it was like the fifth fastest ejection in like the last 10 season. And he himself is a part of the second fastest ejection. So he's got, got two in the top five in the last decade. Then and I think this is the 14th 
uh, I have it pulled up here. This is the fourth time he's been ejected this season, the most in a single season in his career, and he's the first player to be ejected four times in a single season since KD got ejected five times in 2017. It's his 19th career regular season ejection, which is the second most in NBA history in the last 25 years. Like, you just cannot be doing the stuff that he's doing in games. And you see the reaction that Steph looked like he was genuinely crying. And it's probably out of just pure frustration. Like, what is going on? And I know I'm going on a tangent and I'm about to sidebar real quick. But if I see another person try to turn what's been going on with Draymond and flip that about, well, that's because Steph is a bad leader. Bro, Draymond is a grown man. It should and, nobody yeah. should have to police your actions on the court, bro. Like, yeah, what are bro. we talking about? That's the <laughs> most dumb ESPN first take clickbait conversation starter. Is Curry a bad leader because Draymond gets ejected? What are we talking about? Like, y'all are grasping at straws, bro. I like the fact that people were really taking their time to debate that. Like, it's a grown man. Like he handles his own actions. I don't want to hear that ever again. But because of what Draymond is doing, you got Steph in a position where it's like, bro, he's stressing. These games matter. They might not make the plan. And he's playing some of the best basketball of his career. That's insanely frustrating, I would imagine. So 100%. they – honestly, I think make the plan or not, they're, they're a first-round exit. Like you're not – you're first of all, they if might, it's the Nuggets, I get the one seed. By they, might not win a, they might not win a game if it's depending on a matchup. Right. They, yeah, Nuggets is probably sweeping you. If it's the Thunder or the Timberwolves. They get one. Off the respect to Curry, I might say it goes six. Hey, you'll get Either, one. <laughs> right. Either way, you're in Cancun before May starts. <laughs> you have hard decisions to make no matter what happens. In this this year's playoffs, bro. Yeah, uh, I don't know what this Draymond stuff, man. I don't, I, I just I don't get it, bro. It's like it's it's it feels like it's every game. It's something, and it's and, and I'm tired of him playing the innocent. Like I'm just like, bro. Do you see when he almost kicked Grant Williams in the nuts? I was about to say that. How do you? The, almost... and, and that's what that's what gets me. He has he has. Four ejections this year, however many technicals he's accumulated, with the longest leash in the NBA. Facts. Imagine Facts. if he was doing this same stuff and wasn't himself. He'd he been, probably yeah. have 10 ejections, bro. Like, it's crazy the stuff he's able to get away with. And the fact that your leash is that long and you still are getting caught up and ejected and teed up as much as you do is like, bro, you just have to chill. Bro, I ain't gonna lie. If I was a ref, he would have such a short leash with me. Oh, yeah. And because you know, why am I giving Draymond a long leash? If I eject him, no one's even gonna look at me. They're gonna be like, That's Draymond did it again. Like, right. I would be like, Yo, what the tech? Gone. <laughs> gone. Like, gone. So <laughs> <laughs> gone. Like, I don't know why the refs give him such a long leash because he, it's, it's so weird because you would think that, like, you have all these actions, you would have a shorter leash. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like a guy that doesn't have all these problems, like like a Steph, you would give him a long leash because it's like he don't do this often. I don't know. I don't know why that make that makes sense. But yeah, I don't know. The antics and everything, it's 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 hurting the Warriors at this point. And like you said, it's just putting so much on Steph. He already has to carry this team. Now you're getting ejected. Now you're meeting him in the tunnel after he just saved you for a win like like, like, yeah, thanks, big bro, for bailing me out again. Like, stop, bro. Just stop. It's it's taxing at this point. And you can visibly see it from Steph. Like, bro, it's probably mad tiring knowing that I'm the only guy that can do – like, that can carry this team. And my right. quote-unquote – well, my real – my Robin before is a shell of himself. And my Alfred is, like – <laughs> he's not even at the back cave no more, bro. He's getting ejected. So it's a great metaphor. <laughs> <laughs> it's just tough, bro. It's it's bad tiring. I'm a, uh, I I you can visibly see it on Steph, bro. It's probably mad right. tiring. They wrap up their season versus Dallas at Houston at Dallas. 
Utah, Lakers, Blazers, Pelicans, Jazz. A couple of ones that, well, you would think potentially should be a layup, but I, I don't know with this team, bro. I, I genuinely don't know with this team. And then obviously you got the two against the Mavericks. You got the game against the Lakers, which is big for playing seeding. You got the one against the Rockets, which we just talked about could swing the fact that they do or don't. Yes, I hope make they lose that game so bad, bro. I really, I want them to lose, and mainly because the Draymond comments too. Like we ain't worried about the Rockets. All oh, of them lose. I want them to lose that game so bad. Did you see the Tari Eason video where he was in the yeah. locker room? I said, Warrior. Yeah, that's what it feel like because they creeping. They, they creeping. Are. They are. Um, because bro, literally, we probably was up here a little over a month ago and was like, Yeah, bro, the, the 10 it's teams locked. is set. Mm -hmm. it, no, it's not. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> it ain't over to the fat lady singing. The Rockets is, is keeping her quiet right now. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I'm I'm super excited for how this is gonna is gonna shake out. Personally, again, I have been big on the Rockets since last season. I'd like to see the Rockets make the play in. I, I because really because like I said I, the war either way both of those teams are getting bounced in the first round it doesn't really matter I would just ra I rather see the Rockets I rather see the Rockets I want to see I'm, I'm right now I'm one of the fans I'm living for the drama bro what's what's going to say going to do you miss the playing eleven seed I'm not gonna lie do, I'm not gonna lie both of those teams are not making out the plan. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest with you neither of those teams are making out the plan because. Oh, yeah, that also is it's fair because they're going to have to beat the 7 or 8 seed. Exactly. So neither of them teams is making it out of the play. If if you had to pick right now, I mean, I was about to say unbiased, but you don't got no no dog in this race or whatever the saying is. Uh, well, like, who would you say is the two teams you would pick to make the playoffs out of the Kings, Suns, Lakers, Warriors, Rockets? I feel very, very confident. Kings, Lakers. Same. I, I say the same. I think the – yeah, yeah, same. The only thing that blows that up these – are, these are the only two options. It's going to be – the Lakers, I think, are making the playoffs. I don't think there is a world – Adam Silver – You're right, you're right. Yes, <laughs> the playoffs, bro. Not, not saying – I'm not trying to start no narrative that – But it's facts, though. Cheating. It's, it's but not like, happening. Right. I, I think they are – the Lakers – you just said last night – they're going crazy right now. And like one game, one, one game, winner takes all. Of LeBron is emptying the tank. He's not losing. Right. And they've won, I think, six of their last seven or seven of their last eight, something like that. So like they're getting really. hot, right? So it's like, I think the Lakers are getting in. They're winning the two games if they have to win two games. It's they they could still jump to eight, but like if they have to win two, I think they're going to win the two. One game, KD or D book might just they might just have that night. If it was a series against Sacramento, I'm taking Sacramento, but it's just the one game. So, like, you have to respect the type of firepower that Phoenix has. Do you think Malik either Malik way, injury, I'm, injury play oh, factor in there? That too. That is is huge. He's not going to be back unless they make like a deep. They have to probably get to maybe the Western Conference Finals. They're cooked. for him to play. We, yeah, <laughs> unfortunately, <laughs> uh, they're also a team where it's like again, even if they make it, they're not making it out of the first round. Unfortunately, they're not being the Thunder. They're not being the Nuggets. I wouldn't pick them over the Timberwolves either. Mm -hmm. So it's like it's it's tough for them. But at the same time, I wouldn't take the Suns against any of those teams because I'm so out on the Suns. So. Yeah, for for what my money's worth, it would either be Kings, Lakers, or Suns, Lakers. I think Lakers are the lock to get through. I think the Kings, if it was a series, would be my pick. One game is hard to bet against the firepower that KD, D Book, and I guess Bradley Beal to provide um, offensively. But I, I still think the Kings are a better team. Yeah, I I, I think I'd say Kings, Lakers too. At yeah. this point, uh, it, like I said, it's gonna be interesting though, it, and a lot rides on like who's where in the seedings too, because that extra game, like bro, like the difference between nine. No, nah, let me not say that. I just a lot rides on like where you are too, is whether that game's at home or whether that game's on the road. Whether you got to play two two games, is it two road games? Is it a road home game? Like I feel like I just a yeah. lot rides on you know the seeding. So. 
Right now, I'd say Kings Lakers, but I'm very interested to see where everything plays out, like at the end of the season. One hundred percent. It's just, it's gonna be interesting, man. We are we here. We are. Like I said T minus fourteen days until the start of the plan. Mm-hmm. We wind it down. We get in, into playoff basketball. I couldn't be more excited, bro. I could not be more excited because, really, I, I just love the the matchups that it's looking like we're going to probably get whatever comes out of the Western conference playing is going to be a great matchup. Cause you're going to get the thunder, the nuggets or the Timberwolves probably playing the Lakers. That's going to be a great, even if it's the nuggets, the, t- bro, that was the, the tightest sweep <laughs> I've ever seen. It's going to be entertaining. Man. We was in every game. We just didn't right. pull out none of them. Right. <laughs> um, and then out east, like if everything stood as it is right now, we would be getting, we would be getting Sixers, Celtics in round one with <laughs> Embiid back. We'd be getting Heat, Milwaukee. <laughs> Again, Jimmy's trying to play spoiler to Giannis. Then we'd be getting Cavs, Pacers, and Knicks, Magic. I love both of those series, and I. If that shakes out like this with the way the injuries have been for New York, the Magic have a real chance to push into the second round of the Eastern Conference playoffs. And I – no, it, it would be fantastic for them. And I want to go on the record now and say that I've compared Paolo to Carmelo a couple of different times in this podcast. I am going to push that more towards LeBron. He is more LeBron than he is Melo. He still got yeah. the the blend of yeah. mellow type stuff that he does, mm-hmm. but he's he's more. And when I say LeBron, I really mean he's more point forwardy than he yeah. is the the type of mellow archetype scorer out of the post. Um, but Paolo has been fantastic as of late, um, and their defense continues to just be like ridiculous. Jalen Suggs is probably I haven't solidified my first or second team all defense, like where people are going. He's 100% going to be on my all defensive teams. If he doesn't make the actual all defensive teams, I'll blow a gasket because <laughs> no one's wilding out. Um, and then also quietly flying under the radar, bro. Jonathan Isaac is ridiculous. He might actually be the most versatile defender in the NBA. Obviously he has to play limited minutes still, but Bro, when he is playing, when he's on the court, he's like is one of the very like we say guys are switchable one through five. He's one of the few who is like I could exactly. really st- I could start him on the point guard or I could start him on the mm-hmm. center. Forget mm-hmm. the switch. That's just who I I think he's the best matchup for that person. And he genuinely could guard anywhere one through five. Um, you know, legitimate 6'10", ridiculous wingspan, incredibly active. He gives ridiculous effort um, in the limited minutes that he plays for that team on that side of the floor. So uh, shout out to the Magic. Shout out to Jamal Mosley. He should be a, a finalist for Coach of the Year as well because we, we've talked about it a couple times on the podcast, but, but he's got them playing phenomenal basketball out there in Orlando. So excited, excited to see them get, you know, some official playoff run for Paolo and Franz and that team in Orlando. Um, if everything ended today the way it is out west, we would get Thunder Suns round one, or Nuggets Kings. You would get T Wolves Pelicans, which would be a great, great series. Um, and then Clippers Mavericks, mm. which would also be a great series because we already know what Luca does to them boys. On the Clippers, man. He he gonna light them up, bro. Only person, only team he do worse than them is the Suns. Mm-hmm. He gonna light them up. Nothing crazier than a game winner on the Black Lives Matter logo, man. That is that is crazy. Disrespectful, bro. So disrespectful. Wild, wild, wild. Um, you been keeping up with, with March Madness at all? Not one bit. Um, I, I'm. I, I think I'm gonna tune into these. Uh. These women games tonight, though. I've 100% watched, like, I've watched maybe three. I'm talking, like, really, like, sat down and watched three men's games. I've already locked into, like, seven or eight women's games. 
Like yeah, the, the I, tournament I, is just is women's tournament is just better, bro. I, that's what I've heard. That's why I'm like, I right, you know what tonight? LSU Iowa, UConn, USC. Say no more. I'm a lot. Bro, of the games. This is genuinely might be the biggest day viewership wise for women's basketball ever. Like back to back banger games, bro. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna tap it. I don't wanna be I don't wanna be left out. So you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna tap in, I'm gonna put it on the screen and we're gonna see what happens, man. I'm, and I'm, and I'm putting it on I'm putting it on the record now. I'm picking I'm taking Iowa in the first one. I'm taking UConn in the second one. Even though Juju Watkins is a bucket, so is Paige Becker. She's been going crazy. And Caitlin Clark is different, bro. I just think she's different. I think she's gonna get her get back from last year. Um, hey, even though that that LS the LSU team top to bottom, I think is is more talented as a whole. But Caitlin Clark is a different, different animal. Hey man, I wish we can get Caitlin Clark twenty one minutes instead of Spencer oh. Dinwiddie, man. Yo. <laughs> Bro, he really you pissed see, me off, bro. I see, that's like the, it's like the tenth <laughs> shot he's caught this because he just watching, had his trays, bro. watching it live pissed me off so because I see it on TV and it makes me mad. Watching it live pissed me off so much, bro. I'm like, get this guy off the court. He is so bad. It's <laughs> just so annoying, bro. Um, and then I don't know if you do if you've seen any clips of. Uh, DJ Burns is his name from NC State. Big dude, bro. Zebo, bigger. <laughs> Z- <laughs> Zebo times two, bro. He is a machine. He's a unit with crazy good footwork. I need like, to tap in. I just be seeing his pictures on Twitter. I never actually see in his game. I just see the picture and they'd be like, "Look, baby Zebo." Bro, just go. Just go look at. Every every bucket he scored from this last game against Duke. I, when I tell you, and the dude he's playing against, I think his name is Kyle Filipowski. I'm bro, I'm so bad at locking into college players until it's like closer to draft time, and I'm like really deep diving on prospects. Mm-hmm. I think his name is Filipowski. Um, was a center for Duke. He's like one of the better players in the country. What was he supposed to do against somebody that size, bro? Genuinely, what was he supposed to do? He was getting manhandled in the post, bro. And not even just like on some like shack, like I'm uh uh drop step dunk. It was like, no, I'm huh 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 footwork turn drop step post hook shimmy. Like he's getting killed with everything in his tool bag. Um, go, man. I saw a report that said that there's a group chat going around with apparently a couple of NFL GMs that are like they're trying to get him to do a pro day <laughs> after the tournament. To go try out to go play some left tackle. Because if your footwork is, is that nice though, and you're that big, I could see why they would say that. Hundred percent. I've I've watched it in person in in high school. Dudes who are just like giants at these D one college camps who are like objectively at the time bad football players, but coaches are just like you can't train size, bro. You just can't <laughs> train size. I can True. make you good at the technical aspects. But you're already six eight and built and big. I don't got to do none of that work <laughs> there. That's facts. That's why they see it. Yeah, I mean, that's half the battle. You know, it's really yeah. just the size for the most part. Because sometimes, you know, sometimes dudes just be too, like athletically, they're just different. Like no matter yeah. how much work you put in, some people are just athletically just gifted to the point where they just yeah. have an advantage on you. And I think next round he's going up against Zach Eady from Purdue, who's seven five. So it's like. It's about to be a matchup. And How tall is, is uh, Zebo? I think he's only like six seven. Let me see. Six, I think he's seven? Listed, I think he's six nine. He's listed at six nine, but people have said he's really closer to like six seven. So he's Charles Barkley. Okay. Yeah, he's he's listed at six nine two seventy five. I don't know two seventy five. I might be capping just a little bit. <laughs> Um, but the pictures yeah. I've seen, 275 and 6'9", that's not 275. That's what I'm saying, bro. He's definitely might be in the, the 300 club. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, he's it's about to literally be height meet size. Like 7'4", Zach Eady trying to guard a 300-pounder that's trying to, like, put his shoulder in his chest. I, that's going to be – that's a game I'm going to have to watch just for that matchup alone. Yeah. Um, my bracket's been busted. I had Houston as my winner, and uh, my guy Jamal Shee got hurt in their game against Duke, and then they they got bounced in the Sweet 16. So, 
I've been pained ever since that happened. I don't have no dog in the fight anymore. So I can never, I just, it's the time. It's really the time for me. It's like, I don't got no time. I'll be making time to watch NBA. Like, right. I just pure want to. I, I just literally can't do college. I can't do it. Right. Even NBA games, I'll be watching, and it'd be a game I really wanted to see, and I'd be in there like falling asleep, like just tired. Like, yeah, I wish I could. You know what I'm saying? I know the atmosphere for college basketball is lit, but I just can't do it, man. Yeah. And last, and the ones that I have been able to, to catch when I do have that extra bit of time, go to the women's tournament mm-hmm. <laughs> instead of the best. The women's tournament has just been, just been more exciting to me this year. The storylines I feel are better. And mm-hmm. they, they generally have more star power um, on the women's side of the bracket. Uh, so I'm definitely, definitely going to be tapping into the games here in a little bit. I think the first one starts. In not an too, yeah. Who who go first, the LSU or Iowa? Or LSU. LSU. LSU or UConn? LSU. Okay, yeah. Definitely, definitely have to tap into that. Um, with that, though, we'll get out of here with the last thing that I wanted to get on, the little TikTok, the short – I mean, I don't even think I mentioned it earlier in the podcast, bro. First of all, like, comment, subscribe to the video. I know we late. Follow us. <laughs> let you see there at the bottom. We just hit over 400 followers on the Instagram, trying to get to 500 before the playoffs start. Yes, I got sir. about three weeks. So let's hurry up. Let's get to 500. Um, and we're going we're gonna to keep bringing y'all the short content, especially during the NBA playoffs. Um, but with that, as you can see, I have on the screen, it says, which version is better? I got a couple of players here, and I need you to tell me which version of this NBA player was better. So the first one I have for you is a guy we've talked about to kick off this podcast. LeBron, would you rather have, I'm talking pre-Heat Cavs LeBron, like young LeBron in Cleveland, or black mask villain arc Miami Heat LeBron? Miami Heat LeBron. Easily. Okay. Pre, they talking about like first stint Cavs LeBron. Yes. Or Heat LeBron. Give me Heat LeBron easily. He clearly. Would you, would you take any other version of LeBron over Heat LeBron? Yes. Give me 2018 LeBron or 20. Like, give me second, early second stint Cavs LeBron. I think that's the best version of LeBron. I think athletically, Miami Heat LeBron is at his peak, but yeah. I think. Second stint Cal LeBron is the perfect blend between still like an athletic freak, but the mental side of it is like done. Like he's there fully. So like give me second stint Cal LeBron. 100%. 100%. Next one I have for you, would you rather have Denver Nuggets Carmelo or New York Knicks Carmelo? I ain't gonna lie. I like New York Knicks Carmelo. I think New York Knicks Carmelo is. I think Denver Denver Nuggets Carmelo is a, is a little bit more athletic, but I think definitely he used to get yeah. bodies in Denver. He used to go crazy in Denver, but I think Knicks Carmelo is a little bit more refined. I think that's when he really a post technician. He really be working the jab is there. <laughs> yeah, I think he added. I'm not adding. He still always had the three ball a little bit, but you know what I mean. I think. I, I don't know. I like Nick Samello a little bit better too. And that's the when I grew up, that's the one I really like watch, watch for real was was Nick Mello. Yeah. So give me Nick Mello, man. All right, that's fair. That's fair. Um, next one I have for you is is two, it's four versions of the same player. Uh, okay, okay. So the first the first option here is Kevin Durant. Would you rather have Oklahoma City Kevin Durant or Golden State Kevin Durant? See. Golden State KD was him. Like <laughs> he was a killer. Two-time Finals MVP. But I think that it's so much easier to be that when you're playing alongside Steph, Clay, 100%. and Draymond. Like I think, honestly, I truly think they can be the same player. Like they're probably the same player. The situation is just so much different to where mm-hmm. it's like, bro, I'm. You can't double me. You can't help off a of step. You can't help off a of clay. Like, you know what I mean? But I, I'll still take Golden State KD just because he like did it. But I genuinely think they're probably the same player, bro. The situation is just different. Like okay. versus like a like LeBron. When you ask that question, I think mentally they were at different points of their career or different points uh, at that point of their career. Yeah. All right. The next one I have then. Would you rather have Brooklyn Nets KD or Phoenix Suns KD? Nets. Nets KD. Nets KD was. I'm not gonna lie. Nets KD had me like, cause I, 
I was I'm I was never hating on the big three, but I was like, wow, oh, I don't know. I'm I'm not a believer in that's big three. I think they're gonna get hurt, which they did. But <laughs> that that Buck series had me like, yo, bro, he nah, he's Katie's he's I always knew he was different, but he's really like that, bro. He's really like that. He almost like willed them to victory, bro. That that, that game was crazy. Single handedly, bro. Yeah, give me give me Nets, KD. That was because I think that was, yeah. Because I think Phoenix Suns, KD. I think he's like end of his prime. He's still elite. Don't get me wrong. He's still a superstar, but he's yeah. like closer to the end. Nets, KD was like, I'm Golden State, OKC. Maybe it's smidge behind, but I'm still there. So give me Nets, KD. Fair, fair, fair. Um, the last one I actually, well, then now we basically just made a mini bracket. Are you taking, <laughs> are you taking Nets KD? Or are you taking Thunder KD? Oh, man. Oh, you said Thunder, th- Thunder KD. Is, that's that's when you pick, you pick Thunder or, or I pick Warriors? I picked Golden State. I picked Warriors. Okay. And so then are you taking the Warriors KD or are you taking the Nets KD? This is basically like saying... Is KD was the best version of KD on the Nets? Is that that's what I would be saying if I right. picked the Nets? And I'm not, bro. <laughs> you would have a. I I would hear the argument out because he he played so much more dynamically at times in Brooklyn, but that again goes back to because he had to do a little bit more because he didn't have Steph and Iggy and Clay and Draymond around. This is what I'll say, and this is why I'm picking Nets KD. So, because I was thinking, all right, but like, if I'm picking KD off of the Warriors, why don't I just pick the one that won the MVP? But mm. it's like, it's kind of like the LeBron argument where it's like, athletically, I think his peak was like OKC ish type of before the Achilles, you know, OKC KD. But I think mentally, I'd rather have the guy who's been there already, who's, who's done it. It's like, OKC KD blew a 3 1 lead. So it's like, I'm going to take I Nets KD because if I'm comparing that to Golden State, Give me the guy who's been there, who's done that. So that that part of it is, is not a question. Mentally, they're at the, the same part, I would say. But give me the guy who visibly, when I'm watching him play, was capable of leading a team on his own to, like, make it that far. Granted, it was on a super team, but obviously uh, Kyrie got hurt. James Harden's on one leg. Like, KD was willing that team single-handedly versus the Golden State KD who was – I mean, he was on the super team. He's on the greatest team ever. Like, come right. on, what are we talking about? So, I, I think I'll take Nets KD. That's fair. That's fair. That's probably would have been what I what I went with too for the similar logic. Just he he did so much more in Brooklyn mm-hmm. because more was asked of him. Mm-hmm. Uh, that super team is, is cheating. Cheating shouldn't have been allowed. Yeah, bro. <laughs> um, also, I know last episode we were trying to like ballpark where we would put Wemby in like terms of top. 30 top 50 whatever i just put up the ringer always does a top 100 and they updated a couple times throughout the year the last time they updated it was halfway through march they have Wemby as the 24th best player in the nba he's one spot ahead of jalen brown and one spot behind damian lillard as a rookie would you not like projection but like right now do you think he's better than both of those guys i <laughs> <laughs> this season, this oh, yeah, Dave, season, I, I don't know. Dave, this season, there's probably a real case for him to have been better than Damian Lillard. Yeah, I, I can see that one. Jalen Brown's been hooping though. Jalen Brown has been great this year. Yeah, I, I, I almost would say you could flip Dame and JB, and I would be more comfortable if it was like he was sandwiched above Lillard and behind Jalen Brown. I feel that. Yeah. Uh, and then obviously in front of Lillard, you have Sabonis, Bam. Paul George, De'Aaron Fox. It's arguments. It's it's arguments to be made. And like we both said, this time next year, we will be talking about Wemby top 10. Probably. Is he better like, than Anthony Davis? Is he better than, like, bro, this conversation will be, yeah, we're going to be there. But I think right now, I think those are, that's nice company for him to be definitely, around. Definitely, definitely, like, fair spot for him to be in. Um as a rookie is like as unbelievably like high, but Fast. fair. Like it just goes to show how ridiculous of a generational talent he is. Even coming off of the game he had last night, we had like 35. Um, 
against the the Warriors and took them all the way down to the wire there. So like he just consistently is doing ridiculous stuff, bro. Facts. Ridiculous stuff. Um, like we said though, the next time you see us, we are going to be giving you our full award show. That's gonna be every single major end of season award, all of our all defensive teams, all NBA teams as we get ready for um, the playing tournament, probably a couple of those up, going to do our war show and our playing preview kind of back to back. And then playoff time, going to yes, get sir. right into it like we did last year. We're going to give you heavy, heavy predictions. We're going to be giving you in-series recaps, post-game recaps after probably we'll be able to get some film breakdowns out. There's going to be a lot of content coming out. So make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you have the notification bell on so you're not missing any of the uploads that we're putting out. Uh, make sure that you're following us on the socials. That's at Off the Glass Pod on Instagram and at Off the Glass Podcast on TikTok. We're posting shorts content pretty much daily on both of those platforms. So make sure you're tapped into both of those so you're not missing any of the content as we roll into the race for the Larry OB, man. We, it's just, oh, wrong finger. It's, it's right up there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that's going to do it for episode 52 of the Off the Glass Podcast. As always, I'm Billy. That's Dame. And we out. Peace. Yes, sir.